This revision video is going to focus on a core salt preparation practical you need to know, specifically making copper 2 sulfate crystals. We're going to use an insoluble base and a suitable acid in this method to form a soluble salt, which will then need to crystallize out. Stage one of this reaction is to uh, get your dilute acid, in this case, a sulfuric acid, because we're going to make a sulfate. Uh, we're going to set volume of that acid, add it into a beaker, and then we add an excess mass of uh, the black copper 2 oxide base and stir. This will ensure the reaction goes to completion. Now, initially upon stirring, we're going to find the reaction rate is very, very slow. So we then heat this reaction mixture with a Bunsen burner on a blue flame to increase the amount of, uh, amount of heat energy being transferred to the reaction. This will increase the, increase the rate of the chemical reaction. Specifically, it's an acid-base reaction. So our acid is sulfuric acid, our base is copper oxide, and the two are reacting together to form a soluble salt, copper sulfate, and water. So stage one of this process is to heat whilst uh, stirring the reaction mixture to increase the rate of reaction. Good opportunity for some synoptic learning here. So how is it increasing the rate of reaction? Remember, increasing temperature will lead to an increase in the average kinetic energy of the reactant particles. This will lead to a greater frequency of collisions between the reactant particles. Not only that, it will also lead to greater energy upon collision. So we're going to find that not only are there more frequent collisions, but more collisions per second between the reactant particles will have energy equal to or exceeding the activation energy. This will lead to more successful collisions per second and a faster rate of reaction. Okay, stage two of the process is to filter the reaction mixture to remove the excess copper oxide. Let's say at the start that we were using excess copper oxide more than required for the reaction to go to completion. Why filter? We want to separate out the excess insoluble copper 2 oxide from the soluble copper 2 sulfate in solution. That way we're getting just, ideally, the pure copper sulfate solution without any of that solid left in it, which is better for getting pure crystals at the end. So we're going to collect the filtrate and discard the residue, the excess copper oxide solid, which is insoluble and is left on the filter paper. Stage three of this reaction is then to try and create something called a saturated solution. This is what people often forget. We're trying to create this saturated solution. So this is the key stage three. We place our dish of copper sulfate solution, an evaporating basin specifically, above a water bath and heat the water bath to boil the water and evaporate most of the water from this evaporating basin. So we're trying to create a saturated solution. In this context, saturated solution means a solution uh, that has dissolved in it the maximum mass of solute at that particular temperature. So we want a much lower volume of solution, highly concentrated solution with the solute, which we can then form our crystals from. How do we know we've reached saturation point? Well, that's stage four. If we dip a cool glass rod into what we suspect to be a saturated solution, then this is going to help us confirm saturation because that cold glass rod will lower the solubility of solution at the point of contact between the glass rod and the solution. And hopefully some crystals will actually form directly onto the glass rod, proving we are at a saturation point. This allows us to move to stage five, which is making our crystals, essentially our crystallization stage. If we allow the remaining very highly saturated solution to cool slowly over a number of days, we're going to get large crystals forming. Um, and the reason for that is because as the temperature falls, the solubility of the solute in the remaining solution also falls. And this means we begin to form crystals. Over a couple of days, we're probably going to end up with these large crystals and maybe a little pool of liquid, a little pool of solution remaining. So final extra step we could do is to filter the remaining um, small amount of solution and the crystals as well uh, to remove that last little um, pool of solution, leaving us with just the crystals in the filter paper. And then we'd leave those crystals somewhere warm to for the final uh, you know, clinging particles of water to evaporate, leaving us with pure um, dry crystals of copper 2 sulfate at the end. So there you have it, a in-depth method for a salt preparation for copper sulfate crystals from copper 2 oxide reacting with sulfuric acid.